That's always a lovely ammonite to see here on the Jurassic coast. You can see the shingles got up to it today and swept over part of the ammonite there. Well, here I am along the Jurassic coast. I'm going fossil collecting and there are five bad habits you can get into along this stretch of the coastline looking for fossils at low tide. You must not expect to find a really good fossil just on your first venture out. You've got to get the tides right, you've got to stay away from the dangerous cliffs. But if your expectations are really too high, then you might not find exactly what you want and be disappointed. And that won't give you the energy to come back and look for more fossils on good tides in the future. Another bad habit to get into is walking along the beach, scanning, but going really quite fast and not really getting your eye in. Well, a really bad habit you see people getting into is just picking up rocks along the beach, picking them up, lifting them above their heads and hurling them just in the vain hope that they'll get a fossil break out of the rock by chucking it against another rock and damaging it, damaging the other rock and even damaging a fossil if there was one in there and that is seriously, seriously improbable and I reckon uh, the chances of that are highly, highly unlikely so uh, don't do that. There is a fossil collecting code of conduct in operation along the Jurassic Coast. Well, you see people on the beach and they've got a hammer and they think that's a license just to go and tap any of the rocks that they see and just hit willy-nilly without really knowing what to look for. One of the questions I get asked an awful lot are what are the right rocks to look for on the shoreline? And that is one of those questions that's not easy to answer. There's a lot of uh, different permutations to that. You can go over to the Charmouth Heritage Centre and look at the center with all the fossils they found there in the right rocks so bad habit to get into is not knowing the right rocks to look for and just hitting willy-nilly on the beach trying to find some of these lovely little calcite ammonites the ones preserved in the limestone rock and the reason I looked in that rock there is what gave the way gave the game away to me was that little sort of impression of an ammonite on the outside to give the game away there might be something more on the inside. Another bad habit to get into is not bringing some food with you to sustain you and keep you going during the day while you're intensively looking for the fossils at low tide. Just the news of muddy mess coming down onto the shoreline bringing fossils with it that will wash out with the sea's actions. We've had a lot of rain here lately and you can see what that does as it wets all the material and then it comes down a bit like a glacial flow almost, these mud slides, these mud slips. Look at that lovely waterfall flowing across those ledges, those limestone ledges. You can see that direct runoff there coming down onto the beach. Another bad habit to get into fossil collecting is why just look on a beach like this. The shingle's been thrown up on the beach and is covering everything. There's no scoured out pockets where you really want to look for fossils where the sea's got into and hopefully scoured you out a nice ammonite preserved in pyrite found in the pyrite fields. Here's my walking stick, and that's a good habit to get into. That's three points of contact I have on the ground as I walk along these higgledy-piggledy rocks. And look at the sea, what it's done. It's shifted the rocks around, and look at the white markings as the rocks have torn over the top of those other gray limestone rocks. All the markings there are from chalk rocks shifting over the top. Here's the beautiful moss waterfall you can see down along the Jurassic Coast in Pinay Bay. When the moss waterfall collapsed, here's this sort of stalactitic-like material that fell down onto the beach with the moss that had covered the outside. It left this that was beneath it.
A lot of people spot iron pyrite and marker seat on the beach and wonder what it is. And a lot of people mistake it for coprolites, the poo of the ichthyosaur. So they aren't. There's a lot of pyrite and marker seat on the beach. The coprolites look a lot different. So it's a bad habit to get into really not knowing what you're looking for. And you can look in books and in the local museum and in shops, fossil shops to tell you what to look out for here. Well, it's a stormy old day here along the Jurassic coast through towards Pinay Bay. See those big seas down there in the distance. And uh, I think I'm gonna get quite wet. The sun's still trying to make an appearance, but I think the showers are gonna come in. This part of the Jurassic coast is a beautiful place to wander along down here at Pinay Bay through to the west of Lyme Regis to see all the lovely ledges and the cliffs that are dangerous, but very nice to view from afar. Well, that's a beautiful sight there with the moss waterfall, but I have to say, I don't like the look of that turning really black there in the distance and that's rain. Spot the plagiostoma shell and a fossil oyster shell also on the beach. Can you see it there on the beach? Can you spot that fossil oyster shell? Devil's toenails, they called them back along. Well, look at that marine sediment down there in the distance. Those soft shale layers breaking up and forming that almost liquefied mud in places. And then right at the very top, you can see those limestone layers there, ancient marine sediments. Well, I'm right down here in Pinay Bay with those beautiful limestone layers you can see in the distance. And also to have a look at that sea there, those big waves storming in. It's been a really big tide today. And here comes the rain. It's always good to spot these prehistoric wonders on the beach, these lovely big ammonite finds. Here's an impression of an Areotites Bucklandi ammonite. Well, I'm right round here in Pinay Bay and you can see the rain pelting down. But a bad habit to get into is just to come fair where they're collecting all the time. If you're just out in the sunshine, everyone will be out in the sunshine too, at the low tide, looking for the fossil finds. So it's good to get out in rough weather and see what the sea's washed out for you when the erosion's more dynamic. Well, whatever the weather, it's really good to view those ammonites there on the ammonite pavement. I always stop off at that particular juncture as I head down towards the historic cob. Heading back into Lyme, I'm gonna show you some really interesting sites and the weather has really started to close in. I'm soaked to the skin already and there the sea is starting to push in as well. It's coming back in at quite a rate with that stormy weather. And just listen as I film the historic harbour from the shingle embankment at the top. You can hear that real wind rustling in, but a fantastic rainbow here across the Cobb area and over the harbour. What a view to see here at Lyon Regis. And there, down in the distance, you can see them dredging. They're doing a lot of dredging work down here in Lyon Regis this week. Well, I've been doing quite a lot of fossil filming lately because of the really inclement weather and the sea has washed the fossils out of the mudslides and onto the beaches so if you liked this video please don't forget to share and subscribe and leave comments in the comment section below for us that's very helpful and i'll get some more films done shortly for you thanks very much for watching